is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Heckma Harrison, Rob Phillips, and Kyle Yeomans. Monday morning from Frisco, Texas. We're talking Cowboys, bringing you week six, episode number one on a victory Monday, even though it is a bit somber of a victory Monday as the Dallas Cowboys get a 37-34 win over the New York Giants in their first divisional matchup inside the NFC East yesterday. However, that comes at a pretty hefty price as Dak Prescott was injured in the third quarter Six minutes and 33 seconds left on the clock, and he has a compound fracture of his right ankle. If you haven't heard already, he is most likely out for the season in quite some time. We're going to break it down for you, the win, the injury, and what the Cowboys can do moving forward into what is a long week before the Arizona Cardinals coming up on Monday Night Football. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Alongside Rob Phillips, Heckma Harrison, and Isaiah Stanback, and Chris Beam is in the back. And guys... Uh, it really is a somber morning. I'm wearing the Dallas Cowboys Dak Prescott shirt from the pro shop just to uh, just send some kind of positivity this way. And, of course, our pr- thoughts and prayers are with him. He is out of surgery, a successful surgery yesterday. But, Rob, that was uh, definitely a scene that nobody's going to forget anytime soon. Yeah, this uh, 2020 has been no fun, and this Cowboy season is no fun right now. I'm telling you what, I'm just I'm waiting for the aliens at this point to beam down. Like I, <laughs> I, I I've we've seen it all. I mean, and I hope I hope we've seen it all at this point. Um, yes. You know, you you said it, Kyle. The Cowboys sent out a an announcement this morning. I think it's 6 a.m. Uh, that Dak did have successful surgery um, to fix that uh, fracture and dislocation of the compound fracture, and uh, he should be discharged from the hospital today, so that's really good news. And now, uh, you know, he's going to begin a long recovery, and we don't really have a timetable on it yet. Um, I'm sure it's going to be many months, and, you know, the hope would be, I I would assume, that he could get back for, you know, full go for the start of training camp next year, but we'll we'll see what that timeline is. Um, I'll tell you what, guys, I... I, uh, we're, I know we're going to talk about the game at some point here, but I, that, that second half after the injury is kind of a blur to me. I need to go back and watch it because, um, you know, it, it, I, the, the, the silence in the stadium and the silence in the press box is unlike anything I've ever heard after that injury. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that not just a serious, serious injury for a star player, but Dak, it's Dak. You know, Dak doesn't get hurt. Dak doesn't get hurt at all, much less something of this severity. And... He's always kind of seemed indestructible. You know, I don't think he's ever missed a complete series in his five-year Cowboys career so far due to injury. Uh, It's just wild, and we obviously wish him the best. Well, fellas, you know the the saying, uh, well, this guy by the name of Murphy came out with a law, and he must have been having a, a horrible day when he said what can go wrong will go wrong. And I think we've seen that after the first five weeks of football and man it was heartbreaking it was heartbreaking to see Dak laying there well when he as soon as he grabbed his his leg you could see that that ankle wasn't it wasn't good Mm -hmm. and I can't you know for a guy like Dak to have this injury like you said Rob knowing how durable he's been and not missing a game you know you you just and, and knowing everything that he had at stake coming into this season You know, your heart just breaks for him uh, because of everything that he invested and where he was going. I mean, his numbers were trended, trending through the roof. And this was going to be a history making season for him statistically. Uh, But for this team, for this team and just to see our guys and their response and coming from the sideline to, you know, pat him on the head and, and pray with him um, there uh, on the on the ground, man, it, it just talks about this. It says more about this team and the brotherhood that they share, but also of who Dak Prescott is to them. And yeah. I, I just, you know, from a from a 
Cowboys family standpoint, we just we've got to come together and we've got to you know put this season on our backs in, and, and they got to put the season on their backs in, and and have something positive come from this because man, even in a win against the Giants, it kind of feels like a loss, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's no way around it but saying that this just sucks. Um, I know I can't watch injuries like that because I've seen too many of them. Um, and I've experienced them. So um, it gives me too much of a flashback to go and watch things of this nature. Um, it's just a, it's a bad play. It, it just, unfortunately, you know, it, you don't want it to happen to anybody, uh, period, point blank. This is the part of football that you know is real. Um, this is the part of football that you know exists and it happens. Um, you just always hopeful that it doesn't happen to you. Um, and when it does happen, if it happens to you, um, it, it's, it's not real at that moment. Um, so I know you alluded to Dak, you know, reaching for his ankle. I've, I've had, you know, I've blown my foot out. I've torn my Achilles. Um, when those things happen, it's, this isn't real. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this isn't happening at this moment. Like, yeah. and, and I can tell you that you're, you're in a, almost in a state of shock because it's just like, there's no way this is happening right now. Um, and in, right. at that, at that moment, everything, everything that you've invested, everybody that's, that's supporting you, everybody that you're responsible for, everything that you ever hoped and dreamed for is now going, is rushing through your head. I can't even tell wow. you, it's at, it's at warp speed and every single thing that you, you know, I can, I can only imagine. You know, Dax probably thinking about his mom, thinking about his brother, you know, thinking about, you know, his contract. I mean, everything was just rushing through his head just simultaneously while he's looking at his legs. This this is not happening to me right now. This can't be. I've worked too hard. I've put too much work in to get to this point, to put out these performances, to get this team back. It's too much. Um, And I feel for him. uh, But, you know, he will be back. He will be back. um, And, you know, he'll be back, you know, probably better than he he was before. I I can tell you that the body does heal. Um. It, it, but it's a long process, and he's gonna it, mentally. This is gonna, it's gonna be tougher mentally on him than it will be physically, because um, because your body will heal. You can control that portion, right? You have amazing training staff, amazing doctors yeah. out here with the Cowboys. These guys, I can tell you, I've I've went through three surgeries with these guys. They know what the heck they're doing. Um, so he will be perfectly fine in that regard. But mentally, he's going to need to stay around these guys. Mentally, this team's going to have to surround him. Mentally, this community, Cowboys Nation, is going to have to support the crap out of him going forward in order for him to bounce back the way in which he needs to. Now, Isaiah, kind of going off of of that, first off, I want to mention Dr. Gene Curry was the one that did the surgery last night that was successful on the ankle. He's uh, an elite uh, company whenever it comes to the reconstruction of athletes' ankles and and things of the sort. He's one of the best in the world, so Dak Prescott was in great hands there, like you mentioned a moment ago. But you also talk about how you've been through this, and you've gone through this recovery and this rehab, and about the mental side of it. First off, how long of of a rehab is this coming back i know this is just a a, a speculation it's not necessarily a concrete number but how long is the recovery and what was the toughest part of your recovery coming back from a very similar injury for sure well let me let me clarify that our our injuries were were totally different i had i had a complete liz frank injury where i tore all the ligaments in my midfoot um my bones in my foot separated so they had to literally go in and reconstruct my foot um so my timeline was nine to twelve months um, I, I, I also uh, did that injury in October, um, and I did not come back. I didn't touch the field until I think the second week in training camp with the Cowboys. I did that injury coming into the league. So that was about a, that was about a 10-month recovery just for me to touch the field. I mean, probably a 12-month recovery before I, before I felt like I got, I'm even somewhat or even a, a reflection of my old self. Um, in, in Dak's situation, you know, luckily this is boned, right? And, and bone heals in it very well. Um, screws help bones. Uh, so there, the, 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 what we don't know is if there was any ligament damage. Ligaments suck. <laughs> Ligaments um, are, are no fun. Ligaments take a long time. Um, it's not something that you can rush. It's not something that you can accelerate. Um, there's medicine has come a long way. Um, these doctors know every 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 method every piece of technology these guys are ahead of the game so um people can rest assured that he's gonna be fine i would probably project that he'd probably be six to six to nine months um in the summer somewhere in that range um which is fine i mean he'll he'll miss this season um and he will like i said he will come back and he will be perfectly fine is but but there's a lot of other the business side of it that conversation will come up 
Um, and, and this is why guys hate franchise tags. This is why guys want franchise tags removed because you work your butt off to put yourself in a situation to where, hey, I've, I've, I've handled my obligations, right? And now I want to go out and, and, and get the contract that I want. And for somebody to have the ability to place a hand on you and say you can't go anywhere without any long-term um, security, this is this is the worst-case scenario for him business-wise. Yeah, I mean, it's tough from a business standpoint because you look at it with Dak Prescott. He got his, his $30-plus million on the franchise tag, but what is that conversation going to be moving forward with the injury now involved? I don't necessarily want to get into that, at least at this very moment, based off of the recent side of it. And plus, there's a long season left to go. We've got 11 games left with Andy Absolutely. Dalton, at quarterback. Things are going to play itself out whenever that time comes. That time has definitely not come yet. But, Rob, whenever you're looking at this team now, and, and Andy Dalton was able to make a, a pretty fantastic fantastic comeback uh, in, in a final drive, piecing it together. This isn't your normal backup quarterback. And I tweeted this last night or early this morning as well, talking about just the way a veteran quarterback you can tell is a veteran quarterback. He showed that yesterday when he came up to the line of scrimmage, got <coughs> sacked on his first play. And then the second play resulted in a, a timeout called by New York because he went up to the line of scrimmage and audibled out of the original play and really made Joe Judge uneasy when it came to the defensive side of the football. But what does Andy Dalton bring to this team that allows this season to not necessarily come to an end here in week five? Oh, just like you mentioned, a ton of experience. Um, he's, he's not used to the role he's been in. He's been a starter for, for 10 years in the NFL, been to three Pro Bowls, um, has been through some tough times, and, and also had a lot of success. And, um, I mean, the Cowboys can't ask for a better silver lining to a really horrible situation because yeah. I, I think Heckma brought this back up in, in May when he was signed to, to the contract. I mean, he's probably the best quarterback in, in his prime that the Cowboys have had since Bernie Kosar in the early right. 90s when the, when the Cowboys were winning Super Bowls back up to Troy Aikman. I mean, they've had some good ones lately. You know, John Kitna, Kyle Orton, uh, Matt Castle, who is – you know, not the same player when he was here. Andy Dalton can still sling it. We saw it. And, and the thing that's encouraging to me is, look, we've learned you can't trust everything you see in training camp, but he had a really good training camp. And he, and he his connection with Michael Gallagher and City Lane and Mark Cooper when he got some reps was really good. And, and those two plays downfield to Michael Gallup, I mean, that, that is really encouraging that that's already in place going forward. And, uh, but, you know, it, there, there is no substitute for Dak and what everything he can give you in terms of his versatility. Yeah. And I think, you know, not being quite as mobile as Dak with a compromised offensive line is something we got to watch going forward and see how that works because Dak really can buy himself out of trouble. Yep. And Rob, you're, you're on point when you point to the offensive line because schematically, that's going to change a lot of the things that we do with our playbook now that we have Andy Dalton because you're right, he doesn't have the same legs that Dak has. But maybe that is something that will work in our advantage to kind of balancing this team out. And they'll have to take the air out of the ball uh, with the run game. But I, I just... I believe from for, for Andy Dalton and his experience, that's going to be valuable for us. You're talking about a guy that came from the AFC North with defenses that had Ray Lewis on it and James Harrison. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy that has had to read and react very fast to what he's seeing. And I think that may be the one grade up that he has is the ability to process what he's seeing in real time. Not saying that Dak is not there. I'm just saying the experience of Andy Dalton may give you a leg up to that regard. He can still make all the throws. Uh, he's a guy like you, like you said, uh, Kyle, he was able to audible, uh, out of a play because he's recognizing what he's seeing. I'm yep. excited about the opportunity, uh, that Andy Dalton is going to get. Albeit, obviously, I never wanted to see him <laughs> because <laughs> I wanted Dak to finish this thing out, but, here we are, you know, here we are, and we have to talk about the possibilities of having success uh, with a 10-year veteran in Andy Dalton. And, and, heck, check me out, man. This, I know a lot of people, every, obviously, everybody's bummed about, about Dak, as they very well should be. Um, lost, a, lost a great great player and a great man, a great leader on his team um, for this season. Um, but make, make no mistakes. Andy Dalton is a top 25 quarterback in this league. 
I don't care what anybody has to say, and I'll argue that point all day long. He's a top twenty-five quarterback. Andy Dalton was coming here because he needed a a, a, a release. He needed a, he needed to relax for a year <laughs> from everything that he endured for the past ten years in Cincinnati. As you guys can probably imagine, all the stressors that he had there trying to turn a, a bad team, a bad organization into a productive one, right? So he came right. to Dallas, and my 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 thought, my ideology is that he came to Dallas to say, "Whew, let me come here. This is home." Right, I have a crib here. My family wants to be here. Let me go and relax. I can still stay in ball. I can practice every day. I can be a formidable backup to somebody who's never missed a game. Right, <laughs> so I have no intentions really of, of of needing to go in the game. But I'm there if they need me. Guess what? They need you. He's going to take care of business. This dude's an amazing passer. He's a precise a precision passer. He he worked with AJ Green. Obviously, he knows what the heck to do with that. He had Eifert. He had all these guys out there. So he's used to having a couple of dogs with him. He's not used to having all these dogs with him. So that as you talk about <laughs> the opportunities that he has going forward, Cowboys fans, you guys, everybody's in great hands. Great hands, not good hands. Great hands. We lost Dak, but you replaced him with another starter and a top, top guy in this league. It's funny how, you know, we've talked about all the signings they've made in the offseason. This has turned out to be the best signing they've made. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can't ask for a better insurance situation. And you're right, Isaiah, when he signed here, you know, he talked about being home. He didn't flat out say, you know, obviously COVID has created difficult circumstances <laughs> for everybody, but Right. He didn't say that's why he signed here, but obviously it's 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 comfort for him with his family here. But he said, "Look, this is an opportunity to set myself up for the second half of my career." Absolutely. And so, you know, probably thinking in mind, he's going to have some starting opportunities elsewhere after the season, and now he's got a chance to really show other teams what he can do uh, back in a starting role. Well, and also, I think you bring to the table of the the point that. And I saw this on Twitter yesterday, but a lot of people still think he might be the best quarterback in this division. And I think other than maybe you can maybe have that conversation with Carson Wentz, but even there you still might have a better quarterback based off of the way that Wentz has played in 2020 so far. So right now you're set up in good hands, but is he also the best backup quarterback in the entire league at this point? Because I don't know, hands, looking around... <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. I'm looking around, and I'm it's not like, necessarily seeing not anybody like, out there ready to take over just as much as Andy Dalton, Isaiah. Kyle, Kyle he's he's not a backup. I, I, yeah, that's why I want to make point. that clear. Listen, he's Great not point. a backup. He, he chose to be a backup. He mm-hmm. chose to be a backup. Andy Dalton could have easily went off and played for $20, 25000000 million a year this past year if right he wanted now. to. Exactly. Easily. Easily. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I mean, yeah. it's, not even a, it's not even a competition. He's better than 10 quarterbacks in this league right now as that are certain jobs. So he, this was a choice for him. He chose this. He wanted to chill for a minute, right? But he needed, he needed to, he needed to, to reload, man. And he made the decision to come here to, here to Dallas. This was not his only option. Let's not make that mistake by saying he's a backup. He was the yeah. backup to Dak, but by choice. Hmm. You could you could play a game with yourself and go around the league and try to name the backup quarterbacks for other teams. <laughs> it, it's hard, man. It's hard. There's certain teams like, hey, who's Aaron Rodgers' backup? I can't tell you off well, the top of my head right Jordan now. Jordan Rodgers. You know, that's, yeah. that's 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 how unique Jordan, not, not Jordan, Jordan Rodgers. Okay, well, excuse well, me. Uh, whatever his name, whatever his name was <laughs> out of Utah. Oh, State. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan Love. Love. Jordan Love. Yeah, okay. Jordan Love. Bad yeah. example. Bad example. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Jordan Rodgers used to be his backup. We got you, Rob. That's his brother. That's his brother. Yeah. Dude, you guys are tripping. We <laughs> are tripping. Rogers. Uh, I mean, look, it, it, no, it's a, no, but but reason, man, we're we're all of our heads are in the fog right now because we're yeah. having to deal with the fact that we won the game and we lost our uh, we lost our quarterback. But yeah. you know, when you look at Andy Dalton, he is a guy that can give us. So we can have some success with all of the pieces that are around him. Now, if he didn't have any of the guys around him, maybe you would have questions. But we still Zeke is there. Coop is there. Gallup had a game. C.D. Lamb had an amazing game. I mean, there's so many things to unpack. We still got to talk about our defense and just, yeah, everything that's going on there. But receiving-wise, it's staying on the uh, right track. Receiving-wise, Michael Gallup, man, those two catches for him for, with him were, man, those were outstanding mm. catches. And, and uh, like I said, C.D. Lamb, just what an amazing game for the rookie. You're exactly right, and, and Heckman's getting ahead of the red, on the rundown a little bit because we do have to I break know. down this game, even though it's 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 really tough to to get into and, and and really evaluate correctly because of the DAC injury, and we'll get into that coming up here on the other side of the break. We're going to step aside for a moment. We'll be back with more on the offense and just how good those wide receivers were in yesterday's 37-34 win over the Giants when we come back on DallasCowboys.com. 
Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson hats, the official crown of all self-respecting cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks. Free shipping! Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer. When you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses, you can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUSA.com. Essilor. See more do more. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears. Okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, uh, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Back to Talking Cowboys. It's a Victory Monday edition of Talking Cowboys here from the SWBC Mortgage Studios. Glad you're with us. Heckma Harrison, Rob Phillips, Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Whether you're watching from home or cheering in the stands with Essilor lenses, you'll see every exciting play. Book an appointment at your local Essilor experts and find the perfect <laughs> Essilor lenses for you. See more, do more Essilor as we continue on. Following a 37-34 win over the New York Giants yesterday, and this is another game where it took a slow start to uh, to the Cowboys, to say the least. I mean, what's kind of forgotten? <laughs> what's kind of forgotten in this game is you were down 17 to three in the first quarter, um, and and yes, a team that had only scored 47 points entering the day had scored 17 on you immediately. Now that was. Partly because of the pick six for Fackrell uh, early in that ball game out of the linebacking core, but overall, guys, uh, let's kind of move past the Dak Prescott injury for now and break down what this team brought to the table yesterday. They got the win, they got the job done, Heckma, but overall, it still wasn't very pretty at the beginning. Well, no, it wasn't, and I think the pick six uh, by Dak, it, it and it set down being down seventeen to three. I know for me, it was like, you know, hello, darkness, my old friend. Um, <laughs> it, it's just, I, I didn't want to see it. I, I, I felt like, you know, are we just snake bit? Is this just going to be us? Are we just that terrible in the first half? But then there's another side of me that said, oh, we're down by two scores. Now it's time to party. And that was exactly <laughs> what it was. And in second quarter, the offense comes out and, and Dak is just, you know, throwing the ball all over the place. The running game is is getting going. You're seeing Ezekiel get get those yardage, the yards that to get us ahead of the chains. Those things that just make it so much easier easier to get in a rhythm as you know for your offense. But man, if defensively, this Giants team hadn't scored since week two against Chicago. And the first half, man, we made them look like an offensive juggernaut. I mean, that's that's what we do. And we're giving up so many points that that's the part about it that worries me. But even though we have been dogging a lot of guys on this defense, the defense in the fourth quarter is the reason why we had an opportunity to win the game. So it, it's so much good. It's so much bad. But at the <laughs> same time, we, we got the victory. These, uh, yeah, um, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, we talked about how there might have been some plays in the past that should have been turnovers, right? That just hadn't been. 
Well, yeah. we saw that early on in the game that 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 those mistakes. That, that, that guy, he was on a judge machine this week. He saw the video before <laughs> he came to the game, right? So he wasn't going to let that get out of his hands. So. Oh, I hit him right in the hands, Isaiah. <laughs> Jeez, and, and so did <laughs> hey, so did nine balls in, in the previous four <laughs> games, right? So um, you know, those are the mistakes that we that we obviously can't have as a team. Um, you know, these receivers are what we thought they were. There, there's some dudes out there. Yeah, they are. Um, I was impressed. Um, I know Kyle's boy, um, the number one fan for, for CD Lamb is Kyle. And, yeah. you know, he's been catching the ball really well. My question mark for CD this year has been can he take a hit? Right? I mean, he, 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 I mean he looks like a popsicle stick out there. He's so light. <laughs> um, but, but he took some hits. Um, and he impressed me. He made a believer out of me. I was like, okay, that one question mark that I have for him is gone now. The boy could take a hit. He took about two or three of them. Yeah. I think he took one to the head, um, mm-hmm. another one to the chest. He made some doggone trick catches. They have what they want at receiver. No question about it. Um, you know, this offensive line showed up. They, Zeke started running like Zeke. He was given some lanes to run a few times, and he was able to run like Zeke runs. You could see his physicality coming in, lowering his head, really delivering blows to people, being physical. Um, but then you look at the other side of the ball. Ugh. Right, and the other side of the ball is what we thought they were as well. Um, and I know you said that you know these guys showed up in the fourth quarter. They they played like they were supposed to play in the fourth quarter. I, I can't mm-hmm. give credit for guys doing their job. Like that's your job. Um, your job's not to be like Poe and get blocked every dog on play and, and and simply collect a check. Sorry if I see him, I tell him too. It's just. Dude, we got to. There's the guys on this team that have to step up, and um, <laughs> and it's just it's just not happening, right? It's just it's not even just just be who you are. Just be a, just be the good player that you are. We don't ask you to be great. Just be good and handle your responsibilities. And assignments are not being taken care of. And hopefully they figure it out because offenses get better. Yes, they do. I mean, I had concern going in just because of what we've seen, the struggles they've had, regardless of who they're playing. And, and, and the Giants, you know, I think by the end of the game, they only had three-point-something yards per carry. Yeah. But again, early in the game, they found something last week, the second half against the Rams. They were able to find running lanes early. Um, and, you know, they, the Cowboys tightened some things up defensively by the end of it. I think, they find, I think the pressure started to affect Daniel Jones as the game went on. Yep. I thought Tank Lawrence was really active in the game. And that kind of wore them down. They, yeah. you know, they, 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 they went to a dime package late. I thought Darian Thompson did some good things playing as a dime yes. linebacker for him late. Um, but I mean, these slow starts are—they're just stressful, man. They're exhausting. With watching, you know, fall down by two scores uh, to a Giants team that's been averaging 11 points per game. And um, I thought the, the thing I really liked that the offense did was after they fell down 17 to three. They had a 14-play, 75-yard drive, and it had 11 runs in that drive. Yes. Mostly by Zeke. They said, I think Kellen Moore said, you know what, or Mike McCarthy said, you know what, we've got to protect our defense. We yep. got, I don't care what the score is. We have to establish balance. We cannot do this yeah. deal where we've been slinging it around and risk turnovers because we're asking Dak to drop back too much with an offensive line that's banged up. They got back to their balance, man, and it worked, and I think it helped Zeke. It helped establish Zeke, and I wonder going forward with a, you know, Andy's like we say he's not a backup quarterback, but with Andy right. in the game now, uh, do they try to lean on that a little bit more? Take the air you out of the ball a little I bit more, so. and, and try to help Andy out, try to help your defense out, and lean on Zeke because that's that's what they've done in the past, and it's been successful as long as they can create those lanes. Rob, I'm so happy you pointed out that drive because that drive was therapeutic for our defense. Those 11 runs gave those guys an opportunity to just calm down and just get back in this game. We need, as a franchise, we needed that drive. And it would be interesting because when they kept showing over to the sideline, it looked to me like Mike McCarthy was calling the offense right then. He had the laminated play sheet in front of him. Obviously, he's wearing a mask, so you can't see what he's saying. But it looked to me, it appeared that he was making those calls. But still, those 11 runs, it just slowed everything down for this team. And it it was a drive. You know, 14 plays, uh, however many minutes you said it was but it definitely gave us what we needed uh in order to you know steal the lead going into half how about that leading a ball game going into half i liked it yeah i mean hey i, I see you sprinkling that little that little mccarthy call play calling in there too you think you slipped I did, I did. um 
No, but I mean, what that was was time management. That was that was yeah. time of possession management. And I think for the fifth straight week, we've lost that battle uh, collectively, right? And and this this is where we have to improve. That's why I say that the the, the character, the actual genealogy of this team is run first. And you're, it doesn't take away your ability to throw the ball, right? But as we get into these later months, you have to be able to run the ball. And the most the team that runs the ball the best is going to be the, probably the, be the most successful, um, at least on that side of the ball. So that was an amazing drive, um, and hopefully we can see more of that going forward. Now, w- with that drive being in, in mind and the, the running game totally, because uh, Ezekiel Elliott's uh, 19 carries, still below usually his career average, but he did have 91 yards, 105 yards total if you add in what he did in the receiving game. But what did you guys think about the offensive line? Of course, that's been overshadowed because of the the storyline with the the Dalton and, and the defense and the Dak injury, of course. But what what did you guys think about the offensive line, Isaiah, and what they were able to piece together yesterday? Because I thought Terrence Steele had a better game. I thought Tyler Biotish played well, but still is a unit that's a little shaky from time to time. Yeah, it's a little shaky. I mean, but so much of the offensive line is continuity, especially when it comes to the running uh, to the passing game. Um, if you're not in sync, if you haven't been eating lunch, uh, you know, having breakfast, sitting on the toilet next to your next to your to your guy that's next to you, I mean, <laughs> then you're not you're not in sync, right? Um, but so much that 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 unit is is the most. The most instinct, they, 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 they're like a brotherhood, right? Uh, they have to spend some time together. They have to know what each other is thinking because there's so many things on that defensive line that has to get passed off. Guys are stunning. Blitzes are coming. Communication, nonverbal communication. There's so much that goes on. So these guys just have to get some time together. But I like Biotish, man. I like this kid. I, I like him a lot. I like his attitude. Ah. Um, he, he's, he's, he's gritty, man. And, and you have to have that on the offensive line. I don't think that we have any mean offensive alignment. He's the first, I think. Um, and I think that those guys are going to take on that personality and you saw a little bit of that yesterday as guys were trying to finish some blocks off can hey, we talk uh, go, go ahead Hex. no I, i'm just complimenting isaiah on taking biotish out of his swaddling cloth and letting this <laughs> guy be who he is I, I i said you got you got to put him out there to see what the guy has and i think he's proven uh, that he's our starting center. Uh, but I'm, I'm just saying smelly stickers for the whole offensive line. The guys did their jobs. And, and you know, yes. you hate, again, you hate to see Dak go down on a design run. Uh, I, I think we all would say that for the offensive line, we worried for Dak just standing in the pocket. But, man, they did a great job at you know, keeping guys off of them and also opening up those running lanes uh, for Zeke. Uh, in the, the the latter half of the game, so kudos goes out to the offensive line, the guys that have had big question marks, and they've taken a, they've been steamrolled by the media. These guys got to be feeling good about themselves in the job they did. Yeah, two sacks given up, and you guys mentioned the running lanes. Like I, I just mm-hmm. felt like it was too early. I know that they've been the run game has been ripped, and I just feel like it's been kind of a small sample size to say they can't run it because they've either had the scoreboard being a situation or they've just kind of refused to do it and they've been more pass heavy early on in the season and yeah it showed up and that and that's really encouraging going forward and you kind of see why uh, you know Mike McCarthy did he's pr- I think he's adverse to changing out too many spots on the offensive line I know we discussed Zach Martin should he kick out to right tackle if he had done that the Cowboys would have had four changes to their starting lineup since early in the game last week and with mm-hmm. Connor Williams being the only constant guy there. So I, I, yeah. you're right. They're, they're trying to establish some sort of continuity, and maybe they can, they can build on that going forward. And maybe you get Cam Fleming back this week as a potential option or at least some depth there at tackle. Uh, so maybe things are pointing up the more they play together, but they're awfully young. And, again, they don't have Dax mobility back there as much with Dalton when things break down going forward. I, I don't wanna I don't wanna do this again, but I am gonna do it just for those that are listening. Cam Irving is the the tackle that would be coming back this week. Cam Fleming was on the opposite sideline yesterday playing for the Did New I Richard say Giants. it again? Yeah. Did I say it again? <laughs> yeah you did. You it's did, okay. Rob. I just it's wanna make good. sure that that's clear. <laughs> I'm not trying to bring any extra attention to it. You've worked for the team for a no, long time. No. <laughs> but wanted no. to say Cl- call Cam, call me on it. Cam, I Call me on it. I'm yeah. I'm uh, better than that. It's the same <laughs> place. Cam, Cam Irving this is, this is the, the, the tackle that's coming off of IR. Uh, by the way, before we <laughs> before we end up heading to break, I think Heckma just created a new talking se- Cowboys segment with his smelly stickers. Uh, I, I think we need to do it mm. from every Monday 
from now on, I think we need to give out our smelly stickers of the week. Kind of how they do the, the helmet stickers on college football <laughs> for whoever had a good week. I, I think, think we've got to give smelly stickers for, for talking Cowboys. Like for Ohio stand. State's helmets? Yeah, but exactly. There you go. I mean, we I love it. I think we've got I to start it. doing that moving forward. We'll, we'll talk about it after the show. Uh, the Cowboys are back at AT&T Stadium on Monday night to take on the Arizona Cardinals. We're going to break down that game coming up here in just a moment, but a limited number of tickets starting at $89. Just $89. Bucks. Get yours today at DallasCowboys.com slash tickets. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about this 37-34 win over the Giants and look ahead to the Cardinals coming up here on Talking Cowboys. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer. When you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses, you can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUSA.com. Essilor. See more. Do more. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears. Okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Back to Talking Cowboys. Final 10 minutes or so here of Talking Cowboys on a victory Monday. The Cowboys get back to 2-3 and three and are in first place in the NFC East. Glad you're with us here on DallasCowboys.com. We'll be with you throughout the rest of the week. Is <laughs> Monday Night Football on the docket this week? We got an extra show in between games. We got six shows instead of just the five, so plenty of Cowboys content coming up. We've got our Cowboys insider, Mr. Rob Phillips. We've got our resident Super Bowl champion, Isaiah Stanback, and the great Heckma Harrison joining us. As always, I'm Kyle Yeoman <laughs> driving the bus, and while I'm driving the bus, I've got a bone to pick with some people on uh, social media and mm. in the media of Cowboys Nation. I've got a, a just a very slight bone to pick. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Uh, my, my, my two words are stop it. And, and the two words oh, yeah. stop it refer to stop trying to trade our top three wide receivers every single week. Quit it. Just stop. Just stop trying to do it. I know yesterday Amari didn't have a great game. Two receptions, 23 yards. It's not your normal Amari game, but he had a huge reception one on the final drive that got you a first down deep in your own territory that allowed the drive to actually happen in the next two plays to go to Michael Gallup. He had a huge reception in crunch time that allowed you to win that football game yesterday. Secondly, he had 12 receptions and 134 yards a week ago. Why are we trying to trade... Amari Cooper this week. He tried to trade Michael Gallup this week. You see what he did. C.D. Lamb, of course, is not a trade piece at all just because he's incredible and he had uh, all the yards yesterday. Eight for 124 through the air yesterday. Stop trying to trade our three receivers. Wanted to get that out of the way. It's a reason why Team 40 Burger is alive and well. They even almost had 40 yesterday, but they got the win and that's all that matters. Just wanted to, to put that out there. However, Isaiah, I, I know you have a bone to pick with a unit, a specific unit on this Cowboys team. 
And it has to be that defensive interior line and most notably a big number 95 in the middle of that interior of the defensive line as Don Tari Poe did not have a great game yesterday either. Where, did this, where does the push come from for this Cowboys team overall, Isaiah? Uh, hopefully from within. I mean, that's where we're at. There's not enough free agents out there. Snacks Harrison's gone. Um, they have to care enough, man. And I, I I can't say it from sitting in this doggone chair that they don't care, but I can tell you from being a former player um, that there's a sense of pride that comes with playing the game, man. And it, it's, it's not apparent that there's a lot of pride being taken right now um, with this defensive front collectively. Now, individually, Yes, guys are doing okay. Um, you see Alden Smith show up. Um, you see um, Neville. I think Gallimore did a good job coming in and hustling. I think technique wise, he's still um, at a disadvantage because he just doesn't know. He's just he's he's, he's still like a, almost like a teenager playing with these grown men. So at some point in time, he'll be good. But but I appreciate the effort, right? I appreciate the effort. Um, the probably your 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 biggest hustler that you had on a D line was 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 Tristan Hill, and we lost him. Yesterday, yep. um, and I'm not sure if they released his injury information yet, but I, I have my speculations because I think I had the same injury that he had, so he'll be out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, he hustled. He's probably the biggest hustler on that D line. So you lose your biggest hustler in a game. You were and the guy who's playing in his same position as him is is really doesn't appear to care to stop the ball or stop anything as he's getting. You could turn on the film. I mean, I'm just talking here, but turn on the film. There's plenty of plays where he's at the linebacker level um, simply because. He didn't. He didn't care enough not to be at this linebacker level. And these guys were. These guys were pushing him back at, at, at his size, at his weight, at his at his strength. That doesn't just happen unless you're willingly allowing them to do so. Um, and it's not just him. I mean, this whole line has to show up. But yeah, I'm disappointed, man. I'm disappointed. I, I, I said on paper we have we have some dudes on paper. That's paper, man. Everybody got printers. We can. We need these dudes to show up and ball. Yeah, interior. Let me just say, you know, interior, interior, wise, interior line wise, I think you know, for these guys, especially the guys that not that were not here last year, and I think as Cowboy uh, Nation, we're we're looking at this interior line and just looking at the difference between last year and this year. You see that, like guys like Malik Collins for last year, they were you know gap sound. They would get up the field very quickly. These guys aren't doing the same thing, and I think that has to do with the scheme that they're playing. That's asking them to do a lot more reading at the the line of scrimmage and I don't know if that those things are what's contributing to guys getting just taken off the line of scrimmage and, and look Isaiah you're right it's all about effort and not allowing yourself to lose those individual battles but all I'm saying from a philosophy or scheme standpoint I can see that being one of the detailed differences between the Cowboys team defensive line last year and this year but it just looks as though they are losing the line of scrimmage, and especially in the first half against the Giants, it looked like for, for run, they were bringing back Freeman. You know, he was looking like he had new life in the league. Uh, but, man, you know, there, a, a lot of it comes down to pride. Neville Gallimore, he did give you some effort, but then there were other plays where you're like, oh, my God, he's getting dug out of there. But week by week by week, I'm hoping that this defense is able to get better because, look, you have another challenge coming next week in the Arizona Cardinals. Mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into Kyler Murray later in the week. But what stood out to me, Jalen Smith had a much better game in terms of diagnosing things and, and, and yeah. helping in the run game. I just think with you know playing Kyler coming up, there, teams continue to challenge the Cowboys' def- defense uh, with the play action down around the goal line and just the play action in general and, tr- and making the Cowboys' defense move laterally. You know, some of these rollouts mm-hmm. – uh, they're testing Discipline. the Cowboys that way, yeah, and, and it's and it's it's still a problem, you know. It's and yeah. and so with the batch of a quarterback coming up, uh, that's something to really keep an eye on because it's still something they've they've got to address and get better at. Man, Kyler Murray just on the schedule coming up, and DeAndre Hopkins and Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald just kind of sends shivers down my spine, especially with the defense coming up. That's pretty formidable as well. It's going to be a tough matchup for for Arizona. Before we go though. Uh, what did we think about the secondary yesterday? And I know uh, going into the game, you get Anthony Brown back. That was a huge addition, I think. And, of course, he ended up with the scoop and score off of the D-Law strip sack and, and, and the fumble that ensued. But, uh, Hetma, what did we think about the secondary and what they brought to the table in yesterday's win? 
You know, we, well, we just didn't have, uh, I think, the one touchdown that was called back. A guy was running by himself, and it just it, it was like, wow, you know, here we go again. Guys running by themselves from wide open touchdowns, but then there was a flag uh, on the play. I think that the defensive line, the, the, our edge rushers helped our secondary out a lot. I mean, we had a tank sighting yesterday with this strip sack. Uh, Tyron Crawford was even applying some pressure. I mean, it made some great plays uh, on the defensive line, but I think all of those things things combined is what made the secondary not look as bad as they've looked for the first four games. And so if they could continue uh, with that and Rob's guy uh, from A&M, a what's, your, what's your guy's your, your guy number 37, man? He, he played a hell of a Donovan. He a hell of a, Donovan Wilson. Yeah, I, I, won't, I won't say Thompson, but it's Wilson. Donovan Wilson. Uh, he, I mean, look, he has some tackles, man, that I was like, wow, that's that's good. Get guys on the ground. At least you didn't get, you know, get your ankles broke uh, or shook out of your sneakers. So here we go, man. We looked a lot better in the secondary. That I would, we're not giving a grade, but we looked a lot better. Yeah. I, mm, I, I, we looked okay. <laughs> we looked okay. Um, and the reason, I mean, I think Diggs is getting more experience and he's playing more aggressively. Yeah, um, still waiting. And Brown Brown has that fight, man. And we, we you see it show up. You see yeah. it show up. It's just... I mean, you need it, right? You need you need guys like that on your team because it, it's contagious, right? And just like Poe's play can be contagious, um, guys like Brown coming on the field, their their effort can be contagious. Um, and you need guys out there like that. Um, this secondary, they didn't get tested yesterday. Um, when they did get tested, I think they failed um, mm-hmm. as a collect collectively. But you know, like I said, the Cowboys have had a, some some great luck on their side this year as far as stuff getting called back or guys dropping balls on on plays over their head. Um, but they have they they will get better. I, I'm still waiting to see the resemblance of Al Harris, their secondary coach. I want to see him reincarnated in these DBs, and I'm just not seeing that style of play. Yeah, uh, you know, Darius Slayton was the one guy that really got him deep. Uh, it, it was the deep threat for the Giants, and they're still looking for answers in in the safety position. Obviously, I mean, Stephen Parker was signed from the the practice squad, elevated, elevated just for the game on Saturday and he gets 24 snaps at safety. I mean, obviously Mike Nolan's just trying different combinations and, and seeing who can step in and help. And I mentioned Darian Thompson got some work in, in, in the dime package. Uh, so yeah, there was some encouraging stuff. You're hoping you get Cheeto back in the next couple weeks, maybe. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, there was some improvement, but obviously, you know, it's going to get tougher going forward because you're not going to face, you're going to face better offensive lines. You're going to face, uh, better quarterbacks that make better decisions i i I mentioned going in daniel jones is going to give you the ball he's going to give you the ball once or twice a game because he he just makes too many mistakes and and that's what happened yeah i want to see reggie robinson yeah i would love to see yeah he might be next right yeah yeah, I think Reggie go into that safety spot maybe be a uh, maybe it was a tougher transition than originally thought, but hopefully he's active and maybe he will be going into the week. We we do know that uh, Ben DiNucci will we'll probably see him active for the first time this year. Talking about some of those guys who have been on that inactive list. Once again, we want to send our thoughts and prayers to Dak Prescott as he continues to recover from his surgery coming up uh, over the next couple months, but specifically today and what is a tough day for Cowboys Nation. But it is a happy day. The sun came up uh, uh, over the horizon today. We did get a win as a Cowboys Nation yesterday. 37-34 was that final score over the Giants. We've got plenty more to break down over that win and leading into Monday Night Football tomorrow. We've got fans on the 50. Send in your Twitter questions and your Periscope questions tomorrow. We'll answer them at 9.50 when we go live on DallasCowboys.com and the various streaming websites. But that's going to do it here for this Monday edition. For Heck Harrison, Rob Phillips and Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Thanks, special thanks to Chris Beam in the back saying so long CD. from the SWBC Mortgage Studios in Frisco. That'll do it for Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!